Hello guys, welcome to a series called In 10 Minutes where we strive to teach you everything you need to know about a mod pack so you can get back onto your day, back onto your Let's Play World, back to your YouTube series. So anyways guys, without further ado, we're gonna get started and oh, as always, make sure that like button and don't forget to subscribe, but we're gonna get right into the hot action. All right, guys, so today we're going to be going over Tinker's Construct, so we got to get going because we've only got like nine minutes left. So you're going to want to start off with this Materials in You book here. Um, it's going to say by Skyla. So it's very simple. You just click this little arrow here, and it actually gives you a pretty drawn-out introduction, uh, but that is not what we're going to be worrying about today. We're going to be getting right into it because it doesn't really give you the whole tutorial to do that. So first off, you're going to want to make a... Um, these template things. I forget what they're called, but this is how you craft them up. So I'll show... Nope, never mind. So when you put those into the inventory, as I showed you before, you get these blank patterns. And in order to get to the next tiers, you're going to need to have these. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to craft other than the blank patterns is the stencil table. Now, in order to craft one of these, all you need is a blank pattern and a uh, oak wood plank. It does work with the other planks, but here you get a stencil table just like so. Right, and this is our stencil table here, so let's have a look into it. As you can see, it has all of our, these different pictures and squares over here to our left. Well, if we take a bunch of, or you just need one, if you take one blank pattern and say you wanna make this pickaxe looking head thing, this will make, this will make the uh, stencil basically for the material that is to be there. So if we just drop all the rest of these in here, we can make a pickaxe one, we can make the shovel one, and we can make the hatchet one. All right, so after we have the stencil table all made up and our stencils in there, our blank patterns, we're gonna go ahead and make the part builder. Now to make the part builder, you just need oak wood and then a blank pattern up above it. And what this will allow us to do is to go ahead and we'll put our stencils in here, the ones that we just made, and then we will put the block here and look at that. This is how you make a part of the tool. So now we can either, we can use this for a few different things. We'll get into that in a little bit. All right, and now that we have the part builder made up, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and make a storage thing for all of those patterns that we are making up. So this pattern chest here, uh, you can actually attach it to the side of the part builder and it will hold all of the patterns that we have crafted up. So as you can see, oh look, I can see those and I can even put this one in here. And as you can tell, it is in here as well. And this is how you make it, just the, the blank pattern above a normal chest. All right, and the next thing we're gonna need to make in our crafting little venture thing we're going on is a tool station, I believe this is called. So we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna put the crafting table below the blank pattern. Yep, this is the crafting station, or the tool station, sorry about that. Place it here and check this out. This will actually show you what you'll need to make the materials and you can actually craft them in here. So if we look, we're gonna, we're gonna need for a pickaxe, we're gonna need one of these binding patterns and we're also gonna need a tool rod pattern. Now, if we go over here to our part builder, we can go ahead and build these two items. And then we can combine all three here, just like so, into one. And now we have our first Tinker's tool and it says we're cheap because we made it out of cobblestone. All right, guys, so the next step in our quest is to make grout. Now, this will allow us to make a tinker's smeltery, which is what we'll need for better tools. So if you see up above here, this is how you make the grout. And if we look here, I am grout. So you just need sand, gravel, and clay. Now, there is a different alternative version. And this version allows you to use a clay block in the middle along with a few other gravel and sand blocks. That way, you can craft eight at a time. And that is all we need for the next step. And for our next step, we're gonna go ahead and smelt down all of the grout into what is called seared bricks. All right, so let's go ahead and make the first materials. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to make a seared brick. This is the sides of our new smeltery. So let's go ahead and have a look here. All right, pretty cool. Now we're also gonna to need to grab a glass, piece of glass like this. And then the next thing to make is the controller here, and then we're also going to make the tank. Now these are basically the brain of the whole smeltery system here. And what this allows us to do is to have an, it's basically an interface for our smeltery, and it uses lava to smelt down the items. All right, so you can make this smeltery here like this, or you can go out to an 11 by 11. Uh, that includes these sides on each. 
So it's technically inside here is a nine by nine, but it is a heck ton of smelting. And then you can go up pretty much infinite. I have yet to find a cap for the Digger's Construct uh, smelter. I'm not saying there's not one, but I have yet to find it. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, this is what you can go ahead and make. And all I know is I attempted to put nine stacks of diamond blocks in here, and it only came up to about here. So there is so much room in this smeltery for everything. You will probably won't ever need to make one this big. All right, so for this next step, we're actually going to need to go back to our part builder here. And we're going to need to go to the make a cobblestone pickaxe head because we're, our goal is to make a... Uh, better cobblestone pickaxe, right? So we're gonna put this cobblestone pickaxe head here. I went ahead through some golden here earlier So we're gonna go ahead and go like this and as you can see it starts to fill in around it and eventually It will go away like that and now we have a cast and Check it out pretty cool Boom all right, so the next step to making our better pickaxe head is to make or to get better metal. Now, if you go to the nether, you can go ahead and find some cobalt ore that looks like this and some ardite ore that looks like this. And you can throw them into a smeltery like so, and they will start to smelt up just like the gold did, and it will eventually become a liquid. Now, I already went ahead and threw some in here, and now we have some manuleum. And manuleum is the combination of ardite and cobalt. So, again, be careful when you're throwing the cobalt and ardite in there. If, you're, if your goal is not to have them uh, combine into manuleum, I don't recommend throwing them in there together. But we're going to go ahead and throw the manuleum at the bottom and we're going to go ahead and hit this. And as you can see, it starts to pull into our cast. And this is the reusable cast. So whenever this is done, we will be all set. All right, it's done now. So as you can see, we now have a manuleum pickaxe head. And so we're gonna come back over here to our tool station. And we're also gonna realize that our tool station no longer is able to um, support the amount of crafting we're doing basically. Just think of it like that. Uh, we're gonna have to upgrade it, so you're gonna need three seared bricks. You're gonna need to grab some, we're gonna use iron blocks for this. You're gonna need to grab some iron blocks and place them down like that, just kidding. You're gonna place them like so, and then a three seared across the top, and now you have a tool forge. Now this will allow you to make the higher tiered tools, including the hammer, the excavator, and the lumber axe. Also, the scythe, which is pretty cool because it does an area of attack attack. So now we're able to go ahead and throw the pickaxe here. And All right, guys, so I went ahead and made a paper tool rod and a paper binding. And what these will allow us to do is each of them grants us an extra modifier. Uh, so let's go ahead and put those in here like this. And as you can see, we have four now. And things I really like to put on my uh, pickaxes and stuff like that is redstone. I like to throw a diamond on it. And I also like to get lapis. So what each of these does is the redstone makes it so it mines faster. And you can also put more than one piece of redstone on it. Uh, I like diamonds because they add 500 durability. And you can only do that once, unfortunately. And then I also like uh, lapis. As you can see um, from here, we only have 64 and it has fortune one on it. When that hits 360, it will go ahead and be fortune three. Now there are different ones for the, um, for like weapons and all that. We're gonna go ahead and grab a sword here. So we're gonna grab an obsidian broadsword. Now the cool thing is, is that if you use obsidian and ender pearls, it will go ahead and give you beheading, which means it has a chance to uh, behead a mob, right? So it has beheading. It's like a 20% chance every time that you uh, go ahead, or 10% chance every time you put beheading on something. So if you put 10 of them on here, uh, eventually it will, it'll be 100%. So that'll be helpful in a wither skeleton form. And then another thing that is really good on um, swords, where is the quartz at? The quartz, oh no, I'm gonna ruin my streak. I was doing really well. All right, so I also like to put quartz on my weapons here, and this gives you a better attack. So as you can see, when we don't have it here, the attack is 6.2. When we put this here, it's uh, 8.39. So that is another good thing to have. And I believe that redstone still has a similar effect to the tools. It just allows you, because we, as you can see from right here in my inventory, we do have that cooldown, and I believe it does speed that up for each time you put redstone on it. So that's also a great thing to have. Also a piston on one of these will add a knockback, um, will add knockback to it. And I believe blaze powder also gives it the fire. And for tools, as you can see here, this silky jewel, which is string wrapped around an ender or emerald, gives you silk touch on your tools. 
Um, so I do recommend you guys going ahead and checking out the rest of this. Yep, it is here, Fire 8. That sets people on fire. Uh, but that is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy the episode. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button. And also, give me some feedback. This is the pilot episode for this series. So I just want to get some... Uh, should I bump it up to maybe 15 minutes and have some better, like, more information in here? Or should I leave it at 10? But anyways, guys, we'll see you in the next episode. Peace out. Bye-bye.